name's Jeff Blue. I'm the county engineer in Champaign County, Illinois, uh, which is Oh, a hundred or so miles south of Chicago. So we're down in the uh, farmland of the uh, state of Illinois. Um, let me see if I can get this thing to advance. Do, do, do. It's not wanting to advance. There we go. All right. So now it's advancing too far. Okay. So what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about, most of this is about uh, press brake tub girders, but I want to kind of give you some insight as to how we got to uh, thinking about the press brake tub girder here in Champaign County. So um, in Champaign County, you know, we go through a bridge selection process just like anybody else does. Uh, we try to look at the lowest cost and the best possible scenario we can make for our bridges. Uh, we have 600 bridges in Champaign County. A whole bunch of them are just little 50 foot structures over county ditches that basically drain the farm fields in Champaign County. So because um, we're so flat, we just have a whole bunch of these small drainage districts that uh, that go underneath our roadways. So we have to go ahead and, and put bridges in, obviously. So the first thing we used to look at was the precast uh, concrete deck beam, which is um, the uh, kind of the typical use that we would always look at. It's It was typically used on our township roads with our lower volume traffic. Um, and on some uh, rehabilitated county roads uh, where we had bridges where we had a precast, pre-stressed concrete deck beam in place, and we were going ahead and just replacing that. So um, these are these were typically placed in areas where we have uh, less susceptibility to be exposed to chlorides because most of our townships don't use salt. Um, and the reason we did them because they're quick and the uh, cost and these costs that I'm showing you today are, are pre-COVID costs. So uh, we haven't really looked at our costs and tried to figure out everything uh, post-COVID. It seems like everything's up 30 to 40 percent. But these uh, the cost of these precast, pre-stressed concrete deck beams was about $200 a square foot in total cost. And this is all contractors. We don't do any kind of uh, bridge construction like Mark Story's crew did. Um, and we're also paying about $86 a square foot uh, just for the beams. Another option that we like to use on our county roads um, are, you know, rolled beam concrete deck bridges. These are typically built on our higher volume uh, county roads. When I say higher volume, you know, up to like 5,000 a day. We don't have any 40,000 ADT vehicle roads in our county. Um, but these, we do weathering steel. Um, these are on our roads that we salt. Uh, we have a uh, bare pavement policy and we'll we'll go out and run when it's snowing 24 seven until we get all the roads squared away. So these things are seeing a significant amount of chloride contamination. A little bit higher cost for these you see there. Our pre-COVID costs were about $300 a square foot in total cost. Obviously they take a little bit longer because you got to set the beams, you got to pour the deck, you got to do the whole nine yards. So the construction is a bit more tedious than your typical precast uh, deck beam bridge. We've also done some reinforced concrete slab bridges where, you know, it's like an eight or 10 inch reinforced concrete slab, no steel beams underneath them. Uh, we build these on our county or, or higher volume township roads uh, where we don't want to have a growth in our roadway. When I say that is what I mean. I don't want to have to go back three or 400 feet and regrade the roadway and, and repave it and do all that stuff because of the fact that we're putting steel beams or these thicker uh, concrete uh, beams on our roadways, which ends up making the road profile get higher. And then we have to rebuild the road going into it. So we we uh, spend some more money on the bridge, but we uh, end up you know, not having to spend as much money on the roadway. We don't have to buy right of way. We don't have to do, do those types of things that go with kind of having to to uh, expand the height of your bridge. These are higher cost, $500 a square foot is what we're seeing on these types of bridges here in Champaign County. Obviously the construction is a bit more tedious because you got to form all that up and get it ready to pour. Other options that we've looked at in, in uh, Champaign County, box culverts. We've done poured in place. We've done precast concrete box culverts. We've done the metal arch culverts, which is what you see there on the bottom right. Uh, where it kind of comes in as an erector set and uh, they unload it off the truck and the contractor tears out the old structure and starts building this thing on site. Typically they'll build it on site and then lift it and set it into the stream when it's pretty much ready to rock and roll. 
But we started talking about these uh, short span um, bridges with the short span steel bridge lines back in 2019. Um, also, as the county engineer in Champaign County, I'm the uh, right now I'm the president elect for the National Association of County Engineers, NACE. And NACE has a really, really good relationship with the short span steel bridge alliance. And uh, we have a dinner prior to the annual NACE conference where uh, the executive committee and the short span steel bridge alliance folks get together and and we have a little cocktail hour and we have a nice dinner and we talk about what's going on you know in the uh, in the world of bridge building and at the 2019 conference out in Kansas they started uh, talking about these press break tub girders and i said well you know um, sounds like a uh, something that i'd like to try in champaign county even though we haven't had any of these built in the state of Illinois. And probably as any other state association goes, the state of Illinois, when you start talking about um, new things, the uh, the bridge office at our Illinois Department of Transportation gets a little bit nervous. So I, I talked to uh, I talked to him about wanting to do one of these press break tub girders. And you'll see there kind of the general form of the press break tub girder after it's been uh, bent and ready to go at the plant before it's galvanized. So um, after I kind of got the thumbs up from IDOT to say, yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll give this thing a, a shot. Um, I went back to the short span steel bridge alliance and said, we need to form a team from your group of people that we can work with um, to try to get this thing going. So we formed a little group uh, between Valmont Industries, SSAB of America to um, supply the steel and McCann Concrete, which is a precaster uh, here in Illinois to do the precast top on them. And I said, so what's going to have to happen here is you guys, in order for this to be successful in the state of Illinois, you're going to have to be competitive with our precast pre-stressed deck beams because that's the type of bridge that I foresee this kind of uh, being used as is a, is a quick construction on a township road, uh, pretty you know simple construction type project. Uh, so I said, your, your costs are going to have to be very similar uh, in order for you guys to kind of get into the market here in Illinois. So we actually did a purchase order with uh, Valmont uh, for the press break tub girders, which included the tub girder, the concrete deck, the freight, the shop drawings, and the load rating. Um, so the county purchased the material for the uh, for the superstructure of the of the bridge. And then we went ahead and hired a contractor to kind of put it all together. And you'll see there that the material cost only were about $82 a square foot. If you remember back at my one of my first slides on the precast pre-stressed deck beams, they're around $85 a square foot. Now that was delivered, but still they're in that, they're in that same ballpark of where we're getting those uh, concrete beams, which is where we needed to be. And you'll see the total cost of the bridge, including everything, uh, was $263 a square foot, which is right in there and competitive with those precast pre-stressed deck beams. So the construction process for these is really simple. Um, we got the tub girders, like I said, from Valmont. They were hot dip galvanized. You can see a picture of them there. They were shipped down to our precaster in Illinois on a truck and set in their yard. You see the four uh, tub girders sitting in their yard there. Um, the precast decks were poured on top of the tub girders by McCann. You see our contractor there kind of giving a little inspection of what that precast deck on top of those tub girders looks like. Uh, so we had four of these that we needed in order to construct the uh, township bridge that we did. Um, and so the construction process in Illinois, and, and Mark talked about his process uh, out west, is at least in Champaign, Illinois, you know, we we hire a contractor, they drive the pour, the pilings, they pour the abutments, they put the riprap on the slopes, they prepare the stream. And basically then whatever is coming in that you're going to put on top, whether it's a rolled beam, a concrete beam, these pre uh, these uh, press brake tub girders come in on trucks and we got a we got a crane on site that the, the uh, contractor is supplying and they're going to pick these things off the truck like you see here in this picture they got uh, they got big choker straps that go through the holes that are precast into the uh, precast deck and they pick them up off the truck you see it there you got the uh, 
the girder underneath and a concrete deck on top. And there's a concrete back wall that was also precast there. So everything is ready as soon as you put this thing on top of the abutment. abutment. And there they are swinging it into place, putting it on top of the abutment. Uh, there's a sole plate that is attached uh, to, the, uh, to the beams as they come in that sits on top of a pin that's in the abutments that pins the whole thing together. Uh, the only issue you have when we're setting these beams was that, um, see the rebar coming out there in that closure pour, they had to do a little finagling of that because they would come in uh, contact with each other. And you, so you had to make sure you bent them just a little bit here or there to make sure that uh, they weren't conflicting with each other. The beams were all set in one day. Like I said, we only had four beams. It took an hour or so to set each beam in place. So it was a real simple process to set these beams. Um, and then, like I said, they're pinned in place and there's an eight inch closure pour. You see that area in between the beams um, where we got a, you know, on our concrete uh, beams, we'll put a grout material in there. But in this, if we got an eight inch closure pour, uh, we use some pretty high strength stuff uh, between the beams. You can see uh, them kind of troweling off that closure pour there. The, the material that we use was this transpo, which was a polymer concrete. Uh, you can also use ultra high performance concrete in that closure pour as well. We chose Transpo because of the ease of its construction. They basically uh, mixed it on site, uh, put it in a wheelbarrow, took it over to the eight inch closure pour, poured it into the void and, you know, troweled it off with a regular trowel. The crazy thing about this stuff is we did some testing of it uh, 24 hours after it was put in place and it was 9,000 PSI material. Um, that's some pretty high strength material there that you get in 24 hours. So there's a little look at what it looks like underneath the bridge with the grouted riprap, the abutment, the uh, press brake tub girders with the beams on top. Um, we chose a Midwest guardrail system to put on that because for ease of, of, in, of construction, I'm sure there's all kinds of different guardrail systems you can put in with these uh, precast concrete decks on top of the uh, press brake tub girders. Um, bare deck, uh, Mark talked about um, having to maintain a gravel road with a, with a bridge. This actually is a seal coat road. So the approaches coming in and out of it are, uh, are seal coat and the road is seal coat. You see a new seal coat there. Um, when we do our precast deck beams, no matter if they're on top of a press brake tub girder or any kind of concrete topping on anything in Champaign County, uh, we're ch we've chose to use the Pavex material as our concrete sealer. And these beams were actually sealed at the, uh, at the plant, right? When they were put on top of the press brake tub girders, they went ahead and sprayed them with this Pavex material to get them good and sealed up. So when they got delivered to the site, uh, they're ready to set. We don't have to worry about putting any kind of sealer on this deck again, um, except for possibly along the uh, closure pour, but that stuff is, is rock solid anyway. So here's a look at, you know, your most long-term bang for your buck for these type of, of projects. You see the precast beams were $200 a square foot, 50 year life. Uh, the steel beams for the concrete deck were $300 a square foot. We expect about 75 years. Now these, these aren't uh, taken from anything except my own experience, these numbers expected life. I didn't go and do any kind of research on these, but this is what we expect to get out of them. On a concrete slab uh, bridge, 75 years, and on the galvanized press brake tub girder uh, with the concrete deck, uh, we're hoping to get 100 years. So you can see the cost and how they relate to how long these things are going to last. So I really think the press brake tub girder, regardless of whether you're going to put a uh, precast slab on top of it or whether you're going to pour a deck on top of it, if you get that thing galvanized and get it set in place, you're going to have a bridge that's going to last a long time. And in Champaign County, as I'm sure in a lot of counties and other small entities across the United States, it's pretty much up to the county engineer to choose the type of, of construction and we take that information to our county board. We get it approved by them. They don't worry about whether it's going to be concrete or steel. That's my job, not theirs. So I just tell them, hey, trust me, I'm a bridge engineer. And then if they don't like that answer, I say never, but never question the judgment of the engineer. So um, I thank you all for viewing. Uh, go Illini. We're here in the <laughs> home of the University of Illinois. So thanks a lot for having me.